Hi, this is Ms. Delosier, and these are your notes on virus structure. So we're going to start today with talking a little bit about the history of viruses um, and the people that discovered them initially. So virus is Latin for poison, um, and initially they really didn't think it was a microorganism. They, they thought that it was a poison. So uh, it was first described in 1892 by Dmitry Ivanovsky, and he was actually studying a non-bacterial disease that was occurring in tobacco plants, and he couldn't quite figure out what it was. Uh, and the disease actually causes pretty significant damage to the leaves. Uh, now we know this as tobacco mosaic virus, um, but at the time we, they weren't really sure what was happening with it. So in 1898, Martinus Bejernik, I think I said that wrong, named it tobacco mosaic virus. And he actually thought that it was a poison that was being produced. And now we know that it is actually caused by this virus. This is tobacco mosaic virus. This is obviously a modern image from an electron microscope. So what exactly is a virus? So a virus is defined as a small pathogen that can only replicate inside a host cell. And how small is it, you might ask? Well, it's between 20 and 900 nanometers long. And just for the record, a nanometer is one times 10 to the minus ninth meters. So that's very, very small. Um, they're so small that we absolutely cannot see them with a light microscope. They can only be seen with electron microscopes, which we don't have in the lab. So, there are more than 5,000 different types of viruses that have been discovered, but scientists actually think that there are millions of types of viruses and that they might actually be like the most prolific, abundant type of organism um, on Earth. So, and I said organism because we're gonna have some discussion later about whether or not viruses are, are alive. Um, so you can see on this, uh, on this graphic, like the size of bacteria at about one micrometer. And you know that we can see those um, under the oil immersion lens on the microscope. And then the viruses are all smaller than that. Um, so they're, they're smaller than organelles, they're smaller than bacteria, they're very, very small. So let's talk a little bit about viral structure. So as I said, viruses are not associated with the cell. And uh, you may remember from when we talked about cell theory at the beginning of the year that every living thing is made of cells. So since viruses aren't made of cells, they're smaller than cells, technically viruses aren't alive. Um, so all viruses consist of the following two things. They all contain nucleic acid and capsid, a capsid. So we're going to talk about those in a little bit more depth. So a nucleic acid is going to be DNA or RNA, it is always DNA or RNA, it is never both DNA and RNA. And so that can either be double-stranded DNA, single-stranded DNA, double-stranded RNA, or single-stranded RNA. And for those of you that remember your ninth grade biology, you might remember that a couple of these are weirdos and that we don't typically see them um, for any prolonged period of time in normal cellular structures. So uh, the nucleic acid obviously contains the genetic material, and that's the information on how to make more viruses. Uh, but again, remember the viruses can't make copies of themselves. They need a host cell. So we're gonna talk more in depth later about how viruses actually take over cells and, and make them make more copies of themselves, but that's not in this set of notes. Uh, so, like, that would be an example of a single-stranded piece of RNA, the nucleic acid of a virus. A capsid, on the other hand, is a protein coat that surrounds and protects the nucleic acids. Um, and it's made of tightly packed uh, subunits, so kind of think of, like, you're building the capsid out of Legos. And those subunits all are called capsimeres. Um, and the capsimeres can actually be like one specific type of capsimere, or it can be, the capsid can be made of like several different types. So like you could use like little red square Legos and then like big rectangular blue Legos. And that would form your capsid, your, your protein coat that surrounds it. Um, so you've got your, your, your nucleic acid surrounded by the capsid. So each of those green dots is gonna be like a capsimere and the whole thing forms the capsid. 
So capsid shapes determine virus shape. So viruses vary in shape because of the container that they're contained in. So we can have helical, like the one that I just showed you. Tobacco mosaic virus is an example of a helical virus. But you can also have polyhedral viruses. So those of you that remember your geometry, remember that poly means many. So we're gonna draw a polyhedral virus. So we have a capsid that is a many-sided shape. This one happens to be made of triangles and then it contains nucleic acid. It doesn't have to be made of triangles. It can be other shapes. It's just, it's easier for me to draw that one. So this would be like uh, an icosahedral, which is like a 20-sided shape. Uh, those of you that have played any tabletop games have probably seen a 20-sided die. And so that happens to be made of a bunch of little triangles. And then, then the last major category is complex. Now, sometimes you'll see spherical viruses listed in addition, but we're not gonna put them as their own shape, and here's why. So when we talk about spherical viruses, a spherical virus is typically going to be um, several different uh, shapes of viruses, like polyhedral or helical, surrounded by a layer, an, an envelope. And we're gonna talk about that envelope in a second. But you can see here in this picture, this is a spherical virus, right? But it's really just the three light pink helical viruses with the dark pink nucleic acid surrounded by the gray and purple coat, right? So that's a complex virus. Um, and then this would also be a complex virus. This would be um, an example of a polyhedral virus that is attached to a helical virus, and then it's got some weird, crazy tail fiber leggy like things. That is actually a drawing of a real virus. That's a drawing of a bacteriophage, which is a virus that only affects bacteria. So as we get into talking about how viruses reproduce, we'll get into the specifics of like what types of organisms they affect. But you need to know that each of these viruses are very specific to, spe to certain cell types. So uh, both of these complex viruses contain a helical and a polyhedral structure, um, and so it just makes it easier for us to talk about um, the viruses. Okay, so virus add-ons, add-ons. So like we talked about everything that a virus has to have, nucleic acid, protein. That's all they have to have. Everything else is kind of considered an add-on. So um, the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, what else could they have? So they could be surrounded by a layer of lipids. And so for example, everything that we've talked about so far is a naked virus, which is also called a non-enveloped or non-enveloped virus. Um, and so all of those naked viruses have a capsid and a nucleic acid, just like we've been talking about. Um, an enveloped or an enveloped virus is going to contain a capsid, a nucleic acid, and it's going to be surrounded by a phospholipid envelope. And an envelope is just literally going to be like something that surrounds it. Think of it as like the, the coating on the outside but it's a little bit more violent than that because the lipids, the phospholipids that are surrounding it actually come from whatever host cell that the virus just burst out of. So here I have a tobacco mosaic virus, like my little drawing that we've been doing. So we've got my single stranded RNA and we've got our capsid and then you see the purple outer lipid membrane. So that is actually going to be the envelope and that envelope is the lipid remains of a dead host cell. So as it bursts out, it coats itself into the outer membrane of whatever incubated it and made it. Ew, that's disgusting. But that's what an envelope is. The other viral add-on that we need to talk about is the little sticking off thingy. So sometimes when you see viral pictures like the coronavirus, you see that it has little spikes sticking off of it. And so the things that are sticking off of the viral envelope of, um, and sometimes off of a capsid of a naked virus are glycoproteins. And those glycoproteins are called spikes. Okay, so uh, let's draw a virus. I'll be a little bit more careful drawing this one. So you can actually see like the, the um, well, that's, that's good enough. All right, so those spikes are made of glycoproteins. And at the end of each of those glycoproteins, at the ends of each of those spikes, there's a structure that lets the virus attach to and enter the host cell. So it basically is functioning like 
the tips of the spikes are keys to get inside the cell's doors. Um, and so they trick the cell into letting them in and then they hijack the cellular machinery and start producing more virus. So that's it. Um, and we're gonna talk next set of notes about how viruses actually get into the cell, what happens, um, how they reproduce the viral life cycle, and we'll move on from there. Thank you.